Well, good morning, everybody. I've got uh, my special guest back again to share this last day a little bit as well at the beginning. Um, if you, <laughs> I've been looking back over all the videos and I'm seeing how the evolution of Mr. Williams' hair uh, has taken place since the beginning of things. But if you think this hair is getting crazy, how about that hair? That's that's what I looked like when I was your age. And that's what I looked like uh, my first that's so hard to do. Your my first, first year at Judah. <laughs> and this is what I looked like when I was your age. That's my senior picture. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> that's my version of a Farrah Fawcett haircut from Charlie's Angels. They don't know who Farrah Fawcett oh, is. Oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know Charlie's Angels, but you don't know Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> and this is me with my dad. I was 23 years old, and that was like a year before I met Mr. Williams. Aww. So Brenda's going to start off by reading a little devotional from Rich's uh, Winds of Heaven Stuff of Earth, so I'll let her take that from here. Okay, the devotional is by Melissa Reagan, a creative director for Worthy Publishing in Nashville, T Tennessee. Here's a quote from Faith uh, Rich Mullins. Faith is a matter of the will as much as it is of the intellect, Rich Mullins. The lyrics of Rich Mullins are raw and honest and relatable, and we are in desperate need of hearing the truths they contain. In a time when the church was all about keeping up appearances and whitewashed expectations, Rich's voice opened the door for people to be real, to confess that their lives were far from picture perfect. He knew the key to being truly real was the fundamental understanding that even though we have sinned, our Father is watching and waiting to see the crying boys come running back to his arms as he wrote in the song, Growing Young. When we run back to God, we grow and mature in grace, and then we are better able to help those struggling alongside us. We, as the church, can help make the distinction in our culture that while it is natural to struggle with sin, we all do. We can't continue in sin. Accepting sin in the name of tolerance is not freedom. 1 John 5, 4 says, Everyone born of God overcomes the world. NIV. We cannot overcome what we condone. Rich's lyrics are full of struggle, full of grace, and full of God's righteousness. They strike a beautiful balance between owning up to sin and falling on the grace of God. I am eternally grateful for his voice in all its beauty and poetry and for his friendship. Though we were strangers, still I loved him. You see, to love God means that we keep his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down. Everything that has been fathered by God overcomes the corrupt world. This is a victory that has conquered the world, our faith. 1 John 5, 3 and 4. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. All right, see you later. Yeah. Okay, um, so what is this ragamuffin thing all about? The... the the phrase comes from this book, The Ragamuffin Gospel, by Brennan Manning, uh, who, you, there's a little bit in the, in the reading about him. Um, he was once a Franciscan priest. Uh, he became an evangelical itinerant preacher. Um, he, his idea of the ragamuffin gospel, so, so when you think of a ragamuffin, think of like, you know, a Dickens movie or... Uh, you know, something set in that time period and this, the, the street urchins, some of them orphans, some of them just out trying to make their own way, who are completely dependent on the graciousness of, uh, of other people to, to, for their livelihood. Um, this, <clears throat> Brennan says, the good news of the gospel is that we are all equally privileged but undeserving beggars at the door of God's mercy. That's what he calls the ragamuffin gospel. So, Rich, um, Rich came under the I don't know mentorship. I suppose he read the he he heard uh, he heard Brennan preaching on some tapes as he was going from from one place to another, and then he offers this little testimony. 
Um, I owe Brennan Manning $30 for lecture tapes that I bought from him on an IOU. I'm not writing this testimony because of that debt. I simply mention it because indebtedness is a condition indicative of ragamuffins, a condition we all, all share. Until we lose ourselves in the liberating, healing, and invigorating truth to which these pages bear testimony. My introduction to Brendan Manning's work came on a drive south from Manhattan, Kansas, through the edge of the Flint Hills. It was a beautiful drive, best accompanied by the music of Aaron Copeland, or by Pure Silence. When a friend put a tape of one of Manning's lectures in my truck's tape player, I objected, but my friend said, just give it 10 minutes. Five minutes later, I steered the truck onto the shoulder of the road. My eyes were full of tears. I could not see to drive. I have attended church regularly since I was less than a week old. I've heard, I've listened to sermons about virtue, sermons against vice. I've heard about money, time management, tithing, abstinence, and generosity. I've listened to thousands of sermons, but I could count on one hand the number that were a simple proclamation of the gospel of Christ. That proclamation is a message that I heard on those tapes that day. And it did what the gospel can't help but do. It broke the power of mere religiosity in my life and revived a deeper acceptance that had long ago withered within me. In our society, we tend to swear unyielding allegiance to a rigid position, confusing that action with, one, with finding an authentic connection to a life-giving spirit. We miss the gospel of Christ, the good news that all the holy and all-powerful God knows we are dust. He still swoops to breathe into us the breath of life, to bring to our wounds the balm of acceptance and love. No other author has articulated this message more simply or beautifully than Brennan Manning. I owe Brennan $30, and I expect to get it to him sometime soon, but I owe him an even bigger debt for the freedom he helped me find through this book, the greatest debt of all to the God who extends grace to us and especially for the ragamuffins of this world. And just one more little thing here. I like, I like how Brennan himself writes, this is before you read this. The ragamuffin gospel is written with a specific reading audience in mind. This book is not for the super spiritual, it's not for muscular Christians who have made John Wayne, not Jesus, their hero. It's not for academics who would imprison Jesus in the ivory tower of exegesis. It's not for noisy, feel-good folks who manipulate Christianity into a naked appeal to emotion. It's not for hooded mystics who want magic in their religion. It's not for hallelujah Christians who live only on the mountaintop and never have experienced the Valley of Desolation. It's not for the fearless or the tireless. It's not for red-hot zealots who boast with the rich young ruler of the gospel. All these commandments I have kept in my youth, from my youth. It's not for the complacent who hoist over their shoulders a tote bag of honors, diplomas, and good works, actually believing that they have made it. It's not for legalists who would rather surrender control of their souls to rules than risk living in union with Jesus. If anyone's still reading now, the ragamuffin gospel is written for the bedraggled, the beat up, the burned out. It's for wobbly and weak need Christians who know they don't have it all together and who are too proud to accept the handout of amazing grace. It's for the inconsistent, unsteady disciples whose cheese is falling off their cracker. It's for the poor, weak, sinful men and women with hereditary faults and limited talents. It's for the earthen vessels who shuffle along on feet of clay. It is for the bent and bruised who feel that their lives are a great disappointment to God. It's for smart people who know they are stupid and honest disciples who admit they are sometimes scallywags. The Ragamuffin the Gospel is a book I wrote for myself and anyone else who has grown weary and discouraged has run away. Brendan Manning. So that's what the Ragamuffin Gospel is all about. That's why Rich named his band the Ragamuffin Band. Um, so if you uh, if you want to, I put this, this is something, a little handout or something that I would have given you in class and had nicely all 
print it up and fold it and ready for you. Um, this legacy is a farewell meditation from me to you. I use the words from uh, Rich Mullins, one of my favorite albums of his called The Liturgy, A Legacy, and a Ragamuffin Band. Um, you can read it. You know, we talked at the very beginning of the year at retreat about living liturgically. And I got that idea kind of from, from, uh, from this particular album. Um, worship in place, liturgy and legacy, proclamation, praise, confession of sin, affirmation of faith, celebration of grace. Those are the liturgical elements if we observe those every day in our life. And the songs that you're going to hear Rich sing and the things he's going to talk about in between the songs um, from Pursuit of a Legacy uh, all reflect these things. Proclamation, praise, confession of sin, affirmation of faith, celebration of grace. These are things that should be a part of our lives on a daily basis. So with that, um, I'm going to have you stop here and then switch over to the playlist and listen to the four videos. Uh, the, the first one is the song that we would start every year of school with um, here in America where Rich Chase tells us you know, why we're here, saints and children, we're gathered here to hear the sacred story. Um, and then it'll go into uh, kind of a little interlude and then uh, the color green, which we watched uh, when we did our devotional at uh, retreat. Um, and then a couple of more songs that are really meaningful finally final finally ending up with uh, creed which i told you was gonna be the you'd hear it again on the last day of school so go and listen to rich and then uh, come back for just a couple more things from me okay well you know after whenever i watch those this is the 20th time I've gone through this with the senior class. It always just blesses me so much and uh, brings, brings tears, never fails. Last couple of things I wanted to share with you. Um, there's uh, uh, on, on the back of the ragamuffin handout that I, that I put in documents for you, there's uh, an article that Rich wrote for a uh, magazine Christian music magazine back in the day called uh, Release. I wanted to read some of this to you. So this is Rich. I'm setting out to explain again why Jesus is the only true hope for the world, why we should put our hope in him, and what all of that won't mean. And then I remember two things. First thing I remember is how I once won an argument with a friend of mine, who after I'd whacked away all of his defenses after I'd successfully cut off every possible escape route he could use. He blew me away by simply saying, I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want your Jesus. There was no argument left to be had or won. Faith is a matter of the will as much as it is of the intellect. I wanted to believe in Jesus. My friend wanted to believe in himself. In spite of how convincing my reason was, my reason was not compelling. So, the second thing I remember is this. I am a Christian because I have seen the love of God lived out in the lives of people who know him. The word has become flesh, and I have encountered God in the people who have manifest in many unreasonable ways his presence. A presence that is more than convincing. It is a presence that is compelling. And that's my hope and prayer for you, that you will live out your faith, allowing God to be a presence in your life. Not some rationalizing, argumentative, let me explain you into the kingdom kind of a life, but a life where the presence of Christ in your life is compelling. It's a compelling testimony to the gospel. And last, a little, oh, lost my place, sorry, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, here we go. It's not coming, there it is. This is, uh, Rich and a couple of friends of his once wrote a, 
they tried to write like a, a musical sort of a thing called the Canticle Canticle Keel of the Prairies or something like that. This is a, a little passage from the the joy of Jesus. And then this is my parting words to you from Mitch. May the grace of my God be with you. May the grace of my God be with you. May you know the grace of my God. May the love of my Lord be with you. May the love of my Lord be with you. May you know the love of my Lord. And may the love of my Lord be with you, and may you dance and laugh and sing. May you know the warmth of, warmth of his embrace. May you feel the brush of angels' wings like the wind upon your face. May the joy of Jesus be with you. May the joy of Jesus be with you. May the joy of Jesus. May you know the joy of Jesus, and may the joy of Jesus be with you. May the joy of Jesus be with you. It's been a blessing and a pleasure to spend this year with you. Uh, come back, check in a little bit next week, and I'll throw up a few more interesting little tidbits for you to look at. I love you guys. I'll see you hopefully sometime soon.